Hey everybody, welcome back. Been asked by several people if I could show how I built my display cases. Um, I've got five built as of now. They're not all completely full, but oh, by the way, I have built some motorcycles, um, built a tank and a tractor. But anyway, they questions, how do you how have you built your display cases? Because I think that's one of the things with the modelers, like we'll, we build these things are very fragile and um, what do we do with them? So that's, I had this leftover wood. It was shelving wood is what it was for some manufactured cabinets. And I acquired a bunch of shelves. They were finished, uh, they were oak plywood, I think is what it is and the lighting and things like that. So I'll explain how I did that. I'm going probably to, I've got the materials to build one more and I'm going to do that. I'll do it on a time lapse. So in, in during that time lapse, I, I can probably comment on, on what I did and, and whatnot. But these, these cabinets are, are, they're very simple to make and you don't have to have a lot of, technical tools or anything a table saw helps um because this plexiglass that i use which the plexiglass isn't attached and at the bottom but it pretty much just hangs there and seems to be closed but i build them so you can open the plexiglass up and then obviously get in there and then the lighting is also another question how do you light them and these two particular ones here that strip light Believe it or not, that was, so my former job, I was a, I worked um, for a convenience store chain and I was a maintenance man and we, we removed a, an old um, milk cooler and these lights were inside that cooler. They were in tubes and I had to take the actual strip out, but that's where those lights came from here, which was pretty cool. Also this one. And I just took them out and they worked absolutely perfect. And the length was even perfect. I didn't design the box around the light, I actually. Because if you'll notice, these are different over here. These have the, the singles. I guess you would call them singles. But anyway, not to continue rambling. I'm going to uh, get some, get the wood and supplies out. And, and I'll go through this one. These two are actually a little different size. By the way, this one has a different shelf because I had to make it so my big motorcycle would fit in there. Um, so, I mean, you have to design them with your needs in mind. If you have big rigs and things, they're not going to fit. More than likely, a big rig isn't going to fit in, in this one or this one or any of the other ones that I've built. So you'll have to design it, you know, with, with that in mind. You'll have to measure your, your biggest vehicle. And then, like, there's Ruthie's boat. It can't, it won't fit. So unfortunately I can't put it in there. I could build a display case, but I'm actually running out of room. Anyway, let's get to work and I will um, break out some supplies and we'll build one and uh, see how it goes. Stand by. Okay, here we go. So I, I live next to a really busy road. So being out here, it's it, it, it sounds like I'm living next to an interstate. It's so annoying, but anyway. I was going to show you a few things that I had. First things that, that I use, a nail gun. I mean, it's just a brad nailer. This is an inexpensive one. Not that you got to go buy all these tools. You can hand nail the, the boxes if you want to. You can buy small finished nails and probably do just as good. So a nailer, you're going to need a, 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 a tape measure. And then I've got a small pack of hinges here. And that's going to be for the, um, for the plexiglass which is over here. If you'll notice that white sheet over here, this plexiglass is, is very thin. Let's, let's see if I can measure it with a regular tape measure. Super thin stuff. I mean, like probably a 30 second. Yeah, literally like a 30 second. So it's really thin. You don't have to spend a lot of money on, on the plexiglass. This is some that I, that I had. And that would do probably three, if not more, it may do even more than that, depending on the size. If, if you build them the size that I had. And here's the wood. So I was telling you it was shelving wood. And it's just these cheap 
shelves out of these cheap cabinets that my mom actually bought a lot of surplus cabinets and anyway these are the shelves so it is uh just to give you a reference it's 10 and a half inches wide these are 34 and a half inches long and it's half it's half inch plywood is what it is so if you want to buy yourself some half inch plywood and just stain it or you can get the cabinet grade plywood um as long as you're as long as it is wide enough for your car to sit on this way um i generally make well i'll get into all that but so yeah it, there, there's nothing there's nothing at all complicated i've got one two three four five pieces here and i think i'll take all five of these actually to make one box because the ends you have to you have to cut so that takes a whole one to make both ends the back the two tops and then the shelf so there's five pieces already so what i'm going to do and also um it, it helps if you have a table saw if you don't you probably get by with maybe using a skill saw but the the plastic's going to be a real pain because trying to cut that plastic uh with a t with a skill saw it it might um you might break it so i'm not sure if you could score the or whatever but i run mine through the table saw and it works fine if you're careful so i'm going to put this thing on time lapse and we're going to we're going to um get the process going once i get the boards cut and things like that i'll come back and we'll explain more stand by All right, so right now, the the board, the two boards that I cut in the video were for the two ends. Those were the first two cuts. And then the second full length cut was for the shelf because the shelf has got to be shorter than the width of the, the, the uh, top and bottom because it has a back on it. So we want the shelf and also we want it to have a little bit of a setback to make it look right. So there's the shelf. And if that didn't make any sense, don't worry. Didn't make any sense to me either. Shelf and the two ends. Now I've got these clamps on it because I'm about to nail. About to put a few nails. The clamps are here just to hold it in place while I can get the, and this is just a, an extra piece of scrap that's the same width, so I can, something I could clamp to. Just gonna get my a few nails in it. You see, I don't know if you can see this, but I got my safety glasses on. Just because I'm just such a safe person. So I'm going to start it with a few nails and this back board I have has a little bow in it, but don't worry if your boards are a little bowed, use those where you won't be able to tell like in the back. So if you're looking straight at it, you can't tell if it's bowed or not, but if the bow was on the top or the bottom board, it would be evident. Try to avoid that. So let me put a few nails in here. adjust your nail gun so it will be careful to not to shoot the nails on the inside sometimes that will happen so get a few started in the top a few in the bottom if you're not familiar with using a nail gun probably wouldn't be the most wise thing to get one and just go with it maybe have someone show you how to use it first or hand nail them they can be dangerous i have shot my finger I've uh, shot through my finger before with a brad nailer and it, it is not very, not very comfortable. So I'm just putting these few nails in so we can have it held in place. So then I can add my sides and that's the goal here is to get the sides on. So these clamps really add a few more nails for strength, but these clamps can be taken off pretty quick. They're only there to assist me in holding this box together while 
I got some nails in it. Again, guys, if it's loud right now, I apologize. It's just the wind's really blowing hard. The trees are scraping up against the roof. Okay. So, now here's one of the ends that I cut. And this, these things have finished sides, so I'm going to make sure my finished side um, shows on the outside. So it won't look like that, right? Just a piece of cut off plywood. And most of this stuff is just eyeballed, not necessarily. Actually, I've got, I'm going to have to recut that. It doesn't, I mis missed, uh, mismeasured these, so that's not a problem. Take your uh, pencil that, that you properly keep in your hat and make a little mark. That way I know where to cut that off. And more than likely the other side is wrong too. So unless you're perfect, you'll probably end up running into some trouble like me. Because I am definitely not perfect when it comes to, I hate carpenter work, despise it. Although I build a couple houses and things like that, I don't like to do carpenter work. So I'm just gonna set this over here really quick and get the table saw turned back on. and get those boards cut. And who knows, I might fast forward through all this just so you don't have to watch. So I only need to remove a fraction of an inch here. So this won't take but a second. Right here. do decide to use your table saw move your fingers from the way of the blade or else you look like me I've got a short one here but it wasn't from a table saw it was from a bicycle chain so all right now we'll get this assembled let me get this blade out of the way you can use your table saw as a table hence the word table saw all right let's see if they fit now Absolutely. All right. Drop that. Air nailer. Make sure you have your finished side out. Line everything up. Just perfect. Because we're all about perfection. Now we can get the top lined up. Now that's going to give the box quite a bit of strength. You see how simple these go together, guys? They are not complicated at all. I, make it, I can make it complicated, but it's not complicated. It's super easy. And I know this channel has not a thing to do with carpenter work. That's good because I wouldn't have it if it did. Because I don't like carpenter work, but we can do a few things outside of traditional modeling to increase or to enhance our modeling community. And I know you guys have been asking to see how these are built. And I figured if, you know, I could tell you how it was built or I could show you how it was built. And I'm sure that there'll be some that tell me how I did this wrong. And I don't care. That's fine. 
So anyway, these are an inch and a quarter in brads that I'm using. So they're not like two, two and a half inch or whatever. I think this thing will only shoot two inch, but they're, um, they're short, so. All right, so here's our box. Now all we need is a shelf. And that's what this is, and it will probably be too long or too short. No, it shouldn't be. It should fit in there just right. Yeah. Perfect. And it sits back a fraction of an, you know, quarter of an inch or so. But what we have to do first, and I probably should have done already, is to make a, a line. We've got to have a measuring line in here to know where that shelf is going to go. And there is one tricky part about this because you have to nail it from behind. You can't see that mark. So we'll measure and we'll get a measurement and then we'll go on the backside and also draw the same line and uh, put the shelf in, nail it in, and I'm about to speed this up. Okay, so we got our box built. Simple enough, right? So here's the box. Now we need a, you don't have to put a cover. If you wanna just leave it open, you know, then you're pretty much done except for lighting. What I wanna do now is cut my piece of plexiglass to fold over, so all we need is just a simple measurement. Um, I have 11 and a quarter. So I'll probably go somewhere like a, 11 and an eight. I don't want it to hang down past it because if you have it on a shelf, you don't want the plexiglass to hit the shelf. So about 11 and an eight. And the length, 35 and a half. So 11 and an eight. Get my plexiglass here. And this might be a disaster. It might splinter all to pieces, but maybe not. So I'll find the... First, get a measurement. What's the width of this? Probably 30, 32. Okay, so I need to set my saw at 11 and an eighth. I don't like to use the gauge down here. It's not always accurate. There's 11 and an eighth. I don't have my saw blade up so high. It, it seems to chip worse when you have it really, really high. So we will turn it on and let's see what happens.
All right, so I know that sounded super dangerous, but that's just the way it is. All that chipping sound wasn't chipping the plastic, believe it or not. Okay. So, throw our box back up here and test fit the, at least the width. And that is absolutely perfect. So now we just need to cut the length off and uh, we'll get to that. Fast forward time. Now we have our plexiglass cut and we can again fit it to just see that it's going to fit right and it does is when the hinges come into play. So we'll have to drill the plexiglass and these screws are really really small so they'll work just perfect but we'll have to drill the plexiglass and uh, sit, put these, these hinges on and again I'm just going to Fast forward through this, I think you get the picture. Hinges, holes, plates of glass, purpose. So here we go, fast forward. here it is all finished up display case with the cover on the front of it I did only put two hinges I mean the, the cover just basically just sits there it's not like the hinge is gonna get used that often and um, yeah that's it so I pulled the plastic obviously off the plexiglass but hey yeah, guys that's that's all there is to it it's just a box so um, if you can build a box, you can build a display case for your model kit. So there it is. And I'll go inside and um, we'll check the other ones out really quick and I'll, I'll explain the lights one more time. Stand by. All right, so with the lights, the lights, not, not these lights, but the lights that were over on those, this is what I used here. And you can get these online. They're not, they're not cheap, but I mean, they're not gonna break the bank. Real quick, there's the the uh, model or product number or whatever this thing is, and it's Principal or whatever. Sign, it's just sign lights is all it is. And they're sticky, so they have the 3M sticky on the back. And uh, they're just an inline, but you can't just plug them in, okay? So they're, let's see, these are 12 volt. 12 volt DC right, right there. Um, so you have to have a uh, driver which is basically, um, it's like a ballast, I guess. It's just a power inverter. So this is a incoming voltage 120, outgoing voltage 12 volt DC. So you'll have to have an inverter for it. But for my lights, I have a couple. There's one back behind here where it's plugged in and it runs all these and it could run every one of them because LEDs are such low amp draw. But then over on this one, I have a, a, a different type of driver right there that runs these lights. But that one is, you can change the voltage on this one. So I've got it to where these to 12 volts and these run off of, actually they run off of another driver, a different type. But anyway, not to get real technical, if you want to get lights that are LED, you have to also get a, unless they have a built-in driver that you just plug the whole section in, you have to get a um, 
12 volt. A lot of these people that put these LEDs under their trucks and stuff, those the reason they work is because the truck is 12 volt. So you don't have to convert it. So anyway, you have to have a converter. Hope this helped. And the box that I built is exactly this, just like one of these. It's the exact same as these. So that's what I built. And that's what you could get in it. I could straighten them up and get a lot more. I guess not a lot more, but you could squeeze them in there a little farther. Um, but that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the questions. And I've been meaning to get around to doing this one and just, uh, just haven't. So finally, I've got it done. Um, whenever, whenever I run out of space completely, I'll install that one I just built. And I'll... Um, have more room so thank you guys for again for the questions thanks for the great comments thanks for the subscribers if you haven't already subscribed please do so it helps my channel greatly um go over to our facebook group and let's see your display display cases there's several guys over there that have great looking display cases they 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 look better than mine so if you have any any information you'd like to to share you can share it on the comments here in the video or you can go to our facebook group model car videos facebook group and you can share it there. And don't forget to go visit my friend Mark over at Hobby Nut Models and get you some of these or some of these. He's got a lot of these. So if you like old NASCAR kits, boy, go over there and check out Hobby Nut. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for all you do. Let me ramble on for another five minutes telling you how thankful I am. You guys take care. Bye.